Hello. <clears throat> so how do you want it to go? You want to ask me questions because you already have some idea. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so yes. can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, I have a question. Actually, you know, I was born Buddhist. Okay. Uh, after marriage, I became Hindu. Okay. So, you know, there are lots of, you know, differences in the belief system. So, yeah. then I, I like, I feel like which God to pray, you know, sometimes I, I pray for my Hindu God and I pray for Buddhist, okay. So that confusion is still there. So, okay. will you please explain, like, what do you want? Yeah. What? No, not like. <laughs> Sorry. What, what do you want from your prayers? Okay, I am asking. What is it you want from your prayers? What did you want from your prayers? Is what he's asking. No, like, uh, <laughs> I'm getting everything, you know. But just like you know, I get confused, like. Uh, should I pray my Hindu God or a Buddhist God? This kind of <laughs> thing is there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How can I solve your problem? Because I, I tell people don't pray to any God. Okay. <laughs> I have lots of God. <laughs> so, I that... so I tell people you have many gods, okay? You have, you have uh, prayed to them since either you were born or till you became aware of them, whichever it be. And uh, you might have switched, like many Christians switch to Buddhism or Buddhists switch to Hinduism or whatever. Many people switch to Islam. So whatever you have worshipped up till now, I tell them, there is one more God I am giving you, whom you don't have to worship, whom you have to only tell, Whatever is your, whatever is giving you pain, whatever is giving you suffering, whatever is creating stress in your life, just tell to this God for 30 days. If at the end of 30 days, you feel this new God is actually giving you better results than the gods you have been praying, then switch over to the new God. And if you feel your earlier gods were giving you better results, then continue with those gods. The point I am very clear is I am asking people, does your god deliver? If your god doesn't deliver, try their other god I am giving you. And check out which one delivers. So I am not giving god to you as a part of your belief system. I am giving God to you as a part of utility. Something that you use and get benefit and results. And if God doesn't give benefit and results, we don't need that God. What will we do with a God? We go to God only because we want something. I am not saying God is going to give you everything. Like the best thing that happened to me was I became free from wanting anything from life. This is the best gift that anyone can get. So when I became free from wanting anything from life, I now had need for no God, including the God that I am giving to you. I don't have need for that God also, which I am giving to you because I have no need for God. That's what I keep on telling people. Do not become a beggar to your God. Have a relationship of dignity. And dignity means I came to you because I have these issues. I either free me internally from these issues or free me externally from these issues. That's all I tell people. An experiment for 30 days. But at the end of 30 days, decide this or that. You can't have both. Am I have giving you a little more clarity? Yes. 
So, so your confusion was whether to worship this God or that God, which means whether to worship the Buddhist God or the Hindu God. I'm saying check out what have they given to you. And I'm giving you one more God. Check out what this God gives to you. And I, and I tell you that I will not give this God to anyone unless I have thoroughly checked out this God. I have checked this God through thousands of people. And then only I started giving this God to new people. And I tell them, you don't have to worship this God. You just have to talk to the God, to the new God. Okay. Actually, what God is then? For what like, God is that? What God you actually? Have, you have, to, under God? Yeah. You have like, to understand the four gods as I am told. So right in the bottom, number four is all the deities that everyone worships like Buddhists, Hindus and uh, the, sham the shamans, the pagans. They all worship this Third, uh, fourth God. So all the deities, it, it includes Durga, Shiva, it includes uh, uh, Rama, Krishna, it includes uh, your the, the gods of the village, the god, your family gods, all the angels and everything. They all include, there's a big group. This is the fourth group. The third group is the soul, which which people consider also to be God. So those who say I do not need outside God, the God is within me, they are pointing to their soul. So they worship the soul. So this is the second God. All those who want moksha in their life, all those who want liberation in their life, they are worshipping the second God. Uh, sorry, third God. So there was the fourth God. The third God is your soul. Now what is the second God and the first God? Now first God is what I am representing. Whose message I have brought in. Now what is the second God? The second God is the king of the universe. Now this king also started certain religions. And these religions are known as the Abrahamic religions. So all the gods called as the Jehovah or Allah or the Lord or Father, they all are this second God. All those, uh, all the other names like uh, um, the Persian God, Ahura Mazda, it is the second God. So this is the second God. Directly it came and told the humans, listen, I am the highest. There is no one above me. And there truly was no one above this God till 2015, 2015. Because 2015 is the year in which the first God came into this domain, came into this universe. Up till now, the first God never was in this universe, had not, had not done any creation in this universe had not given any religion, had not given any spirituality, had never told, told the humans what you should do. So this is the first God who was not available and is now only available now because only at 20, uh, 2023, I finished my work with the first God. And that, got, that work had nothing to do with the humans. It, was, it had to do with the souls. My work was about freeing the soul from the clutch of the second God, the king. Because the souls wanted to go back to the first God and the second God, the king, would not allow. Now I am working for the humans if they are willing to receive the first God. And in this working, I invite people to try out the first God and see whether this God serves you more than what you have been worshipping up till now. 
So I am not against religion or spirituality, but I say that they do not really serve you. That's all. That doesn't mean I am against because I am not giving you a new religion. I am not giving you a new modality. I am not giving you a new, what I would say, rules to follow. I am not giving you any morality. I am not giving you any ethics. I am not telling you what you should do, what you should not do. I am not telling you anything you should believe. Because the first thing I tell you is the first God needs no worshipping. The first God doesn't need your faith, belief, trust, devotion, surrender, submission, nothing first God needs. First God says, you can have absolute disbelief in me and yet this connection will work. How does the connection happen? You just talk with the face that is on the book or in the healing card and the connection happens. It happens in the moment. I am not saying it is a permanent connection. In the moment the connection happens, talk with the book, talk with the healing card. If you want a long-term connection, then take the mantra and do it every day for two minutes. So these are the options I am giving you. Okay. Healing parts of Sir, yes. Uh, just tell me about the healing because uh, you are talking about the healing also, no? Uh, in you have faith, and if you, you know, follow in thirty, if follow for thirty days, mm. then how healing. how does it work, sir? You you do not need faith. Okay. You do not need tr trust. Okay. You do not need anything to believe. Why okay. should you believe when you do not know anything? Mm -hmm. Then I will be asking you to be inauthentic. Okay. So no belief. Okay. Just talk as if you go to a therapist. Mm -hmm. And to the therapist you say that this is what I am going through. This is what I am feeling. This, these are my fear. These are my concern. These are my this is what's stressing me out. This is what, these are my anxieties. And uh, these are the negative thoughts that I'm having. These are the things that, that I feel that are going to damage me. These are the attacks I think that are happening on me. Just say all these things that are happening to you and then keep it. You don't have to even say it every time. Just saying it once is enough. But next time something different happens, again tell that. Again something different happens, tell that. You might say it today and then not use that card for next two days. But after two days again you feel stressed out. Then again speak to the card. This is why I am stressed out. And then at the end of 30 days, check out. What has shifted in your life? Give the book or the card 30 days. Now, sometimes you might feel as I as you are talking to the picture or the book that something bad starts happening in your life. Possible. If that happens, tell it to that, tell it to the book or tell it to the card. Let God take care of whatever is happening because you are talking to God. I want you to just talk with God for 30 days, not like daily, not like a ritual, but whenever you need. It's like going to a friend and telling, this is what I went through today. Okay, that means every time we have to talk in a different uh, topic, in the sense problem. Or... Yeah, because every day your problems will be different. Yeah, could be a different, no? Yeah. Okay. Sir, yes. what is the best time to talk to the card or to the book? Night, ah. morning, afternoon, time. empty stomach? 24 hours, no restrictions. Okay. 
you can get up at midnight also right? yes. yes midnight oh. anytime like yeah. you wake up in the night you want to talk to the card you can go yeah. ahead right? just just don't talk to the card or to the book in the washroom bathroom oh, yes. <laughs> that's all okay sir nice hmm. sir one more question not being doubtful but just a thought in my mind Mm. Sir, when before God chose you as a messenger, what mm. were you doing, sir? In those days, I was working with the deities. Dentist, D D deities. Hey, deities. Deities. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, so actually, I was teaching a healing modality that belonged to someone else. Okay, sir. And then one day, I said, uh, if anyone in this universe is listening to me, mm -hmm. I want my own modality. Okay. So after a few days, someone came to me and it all happens in my head because I am not clairvoyant, I am not claircognizant, I am not clairaudient. Um, I am not clairvoyant, I am not clairaudient and I am not clairsentient, I am claircognizant. So those who are claircognizant, they work within their head. So I know, I come to know. So someone came to me and gave me a protocol. So what, whoever came to me, I said, you, I have a certain requirement for my healing protocol. The healing protocol has to deliver results in real time, which means if I do it now, I must get results now. I cannot, ex you cannot ex tell me that results will come after two months or three months. That is number one, real time. Number two, I'm not going to spend more than one minute in that protocol. You cannot give me a protocol which is long. Number three, the results have to be verifiable. It cannot be a result that I cannot verify. And number four, it has to be mechanical. It cannot have an element of faith or trust or belief. It has to be mechanical, which means I just say it and results have to happen, whether I believe in it or not. So there cannot be a placebo thing. So don't give me anything which has a placebo effect. That someone believes and then it happens. No. If someone has total skepticism, then also it must happen. So these were my conditions to whoever came. And then I checked out and I got the results. I took them to people. The first class that I delivered the protocol, there were certain ladies who were clairvoyant. They told me that why is Shiva in this room? And that was again a confirmation because it was Shiva who gave me the protocols. After that, I started working with the deities. And then different deities would start coming in, different masters would start coming in. I worked with many of them for many years. And then one day, they all left. So no matter how much I tried, I couldn't contact them. And then in the end, one day God came. So God's, the first thought I got was, now you have to work for me. And I asked, who are you? He said, God. I said, I know many gods. So which one? He said, I am the ultimate, supreme, absolute. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, no one below you? Or no one above you? He said, no one above me. I said, fine. What is the work that we have to do? And also at that time, I told him, I do not know you and there is no way I can cross check you. So you may be, it's possible I'm hallucinating or it's possible that some deity, some angel, some master, some extraterrestrial or someone from the lower uh, world is talking to me. So I'm going to watch the outcome of your work very carefully. If it is benevolent, I will continue. If it is malefic, I will stop the work. That is how my work with God started. All right, sir. So, so just for my knowledge, um. How do you worship God so at home? Like I don't worship. You don't. It's just in your mind. No, no, I don't worship. Why should I worship? Yes, right. I talk with God. I don't worship. Okay. But like 
we do like you know certain rituals in the morning and yeah, our I, first thing we do I is uh, wash that. up and then is yeah. it necessary or is it just a belief and uh, we're trying to like, these uh, were all all your rituals were given to you by people who want to control you so yeah. from tomorrow if we stop doing all the rituals will it affect our relationship with god no no i know i know <laughs> <laughs> for 30 days don't stop anything okay do everything at yeah. the same time try out the one I gave you All after right. 30 days decide the one I gave you the new god or the old god okay, okay so the book can be with us the card can be with us even during our uh, menstrual days yes yes no issue okay. I have one more question, but I forgot. Yes, and also um, the three ways of connecting to God, like the book, the card, and this mantra. Yes. Can, yes. Can you give us the mantra, sir? Uh, that you can talk with uh, Shivani and Gayatri. All they right, sir. You. They're with us. Okay, sir. Yeah, they can give you. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Uh, there's one more question in my mind. If, anyway, sir? So, yes. <laughs> since, since you told us about your experience like connection with the god right yes. but i just want to know like how it about your experience like what was it like was it a like what yeah. kind of experience yeah feeling you okay had uh first thing i have not seen god okay i have not heard god okay. i have not known god I do not know anything about God. Okay. I follow the instructions of God. Mm -hmm. I have zero experience of God. I cognize the presence of God, but I do not feel God. Cognizing has no feeling. It is just a knowing. A knowing that I am talking with God or not. So I cognize. Zero feeling. I have no positive feeling with God, no negative feeling with God. Empty. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Empty. No? So, yes, one more question. Yeah, I know I can remember what I want to ask you. Uh, sir, with this power that you have, you know, the connection that you have with God, does it give you warning about uh, your danger that is coming in your life? Or, you know, things like that. The mishaps that are going to force, I mean, what do you call that? Okay. Confront or occur. Does it uh, okay. warn you? I mean, the uh, power warns okay. you? Let me, let me answer that. With God, there is no protection. There is no protection with God? No. But we thought After, like there's protection with God. No. No okay. God protects you. Okay. No God protects you okay so then how we are safe all the time and you then see? because you do not know the very design of life that is why you are made to believe that someone can protect you or something can protect you you do not do, know the design of life i am briefly giving you the design of life mm -hmm. your life was already scripted before you were born in that script all the accidents were there all the loss were there all the uh, people who will attack you everything is written okay. it comes from your past karmic baggage now once it is written someone has to execute that script after you are born this thing which executes your script after you are born is known as spirit. It is the job of the spirit to harm you as well as to protect you. So only one who can protect you is your spirit and the only one who harms you is also your spirit because spirit is neither protecting you nor harming you. Spirit is just following the storyline and making it real, making all the events happen. Now, if you think by going to a temple, 
if you think by going to a guru, if you think by going to a Siddhi, Siddha Purush, you will get protection, it will not happen. Unless it is a part of your storyline, which is already written that that person will protect you, that temple deity will protect you. It has to be in the script. Otherwise, the spirit will not allow anyone to protect you. Do you get any sense? Yeah, but uh, it's hard to believe, you know, that the world runs that way. I mean, we all are living that way. And then because we are uh, conditioned to, yeah. You have no idea the way the world runs. I have seen it happening. Yes. Because all this while, you know, we were thinking that going to Gumba, you're doing certain pujas and all are they are, actually yeah. protecting us. Or maybe we're trying to, mm. uh, 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 what do you call that, safeguard the mishaps they, or the they are a good, They are a good time pass and they have got good placebo effect. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what will you do throughout your the day? At least going to the temples and gumbas gives you some activity, some time pass. And you feel you have done a good job. So that is what is the placebo effect. Okay. But I can actually see. I is know it... what's all there in the gumbas. I know what's there in the temples. And I know what they are doing to whom. So, uh, According to you, sir, if we talk to a book, the things that's going to happen in the future may change. No, nothing will change. Nothing will change. Because God doesn't change the storyline. No. God gives Everything you... Everything is uncertain. God gives you relief within the storyline. Okay. How that God will decide. Okay. Yeah, so that means tomorrow if I'm going to have a heartbreak, tomorrow it's like, see, it is written, okay? It is written. It is written. But then I want to relieve from that heartache and I want to talk to the, I mean, I'll talk to the card and then I'll be relieved. That is also written already. That Whether is I'll be relieved or not is also written. Uh, it is written. And maybe it is not written. But if you have pain and suffering, God comes in to give relief there. That is where the difference comes. The heartbreak was created within the storyline in order to create huge amount of pain, huge amount of sadness, huge amount of grief. This is where God can step in. To give me relief. To give you relief. And it's coming into my life to give me relief is because I'm talking to the card and I've asked for that to God, right? Yes. Interesting. Another thing I just want to tell you that relief that God gives is for the moment. Why? Because your spirit is ongoingly creating events which are going to give you suffering. Why? That is why you have to ongoingly keep talking to God to keep on giving you the relief. It's not a one-time thing. Thank and so why, why the humans have to suffer so much? I have written everything in the book because the book contains huge amount of information. Okay. We'll go through the book this evening. And yes, of course, not just suffering. We've also uh, seen happiness. We've also seen uh, prosperity. We have seen growth. And we're thankful to God for that also. It's not always suffering. And let me tell you, every, every good thing that you have seen is the seed to every bad thing that comes in your life. Is it seen? Every it's good seen. thing that you have seen is the seed for every bad thing that comes into your life. Mm -hmm. Why I am saying that? If you get money, it is going to cause you bigger problems. If you go into relationship, it is going to cause you bigger problems. 
if you go into such a pursuit of success and have success, it is going to cause you bigger problems. If you go into trying to build up your uh, name, fame, and whatever, it is going to cause you bigger problems. Anything that you feel is good in life is the very foundation of all the future suffering and pain. Examine and you will find that what I am saying. And I'm not saying that you run away from them. No, if it is in your storyline, have them. But don't believe they are good things. They are just what it is right now. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> so any other questions coming up? I volunteered for them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, sir. It was nice talking okay. to you. Thank we'll go you. through the book and we'll talk to the card. Yes. We'll get back and to you, you, sir. And you can take the mantra from Shivani or uh, Gayatri. Sure, we'll do that, sir. Right. And we'll, of course, uh, get back to Gayatri uh, yeah. with our experience. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you for joining yeah. us, sir. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. See you again. Thank See you. you.